Hello and a very warm welcome to all of you. 19th of May 2021, we had a couple of good uh, guidelines given by the government of India. So first and foremost, we had many new changes on the vaccine front for COVID-19. Then on 17th of May, we also had change in the COVID treatment protocol by the AIMS Institute, Delhi. And we also had approval for some of the monoclonal antibodies for emergency use authorization in India. So we are going to discuss a couple of minutes on each of them. Let us first take on the vaccines. The NEGVAC committee, that is the National Expert Group on Vaccine Administration for COVID, it is a, it is a group comprising of the expert panel, scientists, eminent scientists from India and researchers from India. And they are supposed to advise the Union Ministry of Health. And whatever recommendation they give is usually accepted by the Union Ministry of Health until and unless it is way beyond the purview of the whole ministry. So uh, before this guideline, 19th of May guideline, we did not have a clear cut guideline on what should be the vaccine protocol for the COVID patients or when should they take the vaccine. So now we have got a very definite, discrete, clear cut guideline that all the cases of COVID they have to wait for their recovery and once they are recovered they have to wait for three months to get a vaccine shot in case you're planning for your first shot and you got covid so you need to wait for three months in case you already had taken the first dose and then you got unfortunately got covid and you were obviously scheduled for the second dose you again need to wait for three months after recovery in all the cases where the COVID patients, they were hospitalized, they were given monoclonal antibodies or they were given convalescent plasma. Again, after discharge, they have to wait for three months after discharge from COVID-19 facility or after complete clinical recovery from COVID-19 illness. Along with that, there could be certain patients who have uh, got hospitalization or ICU admission due to any other illness apart from COVID. In those cases, these patients have to wait for at least four to six because of the fact that they underwent some acute illness and they should be waiting for four to eight weeks for that acute illness to subside and then take a COVID-19 vaccine. So these are a couple of very strong and good practices for vaccine protocol in India. That's that's good of them because because you know that uh, when on a public health level we are talking and when the guidelines are not very discreet or when the guidelines are confusing, that creates of course that uh, that that simply hampers your national immunization program that is done, but it also kind of creates a panic among the public, which again takes off takes a different route for your whole national program. So creating panic and underestimating the national program effectivity for vaccines is two big disadvantages once we have a confusing guidelines so we have we are thankful to the ntagi and the negvac committee for coming up with discrete guidelines next is the guidelines for lactating females earlier for lactating females we did not have any discrete guidelines but but again now the vaccine is recommended for the lactating females for pregnant females still for pregnant females, still the committee is looking on them and we are awaiting some um, discrete guidelines for pregnant females. But pregnant females and lactating females, they both can take the vaccine and they are eligible to take the vaccine and they should be talking to their uh, respective family physicians or doctors for the benefits and the risk associated with the vaccine. But for lactating females, it's a, it's a green signal and it's a go ahead that the vaccine, COVID vaccine, both Covishield and the Covaxin and the Sputnik vaccine, all kinds of vaccine, they are recommended for the lactating females. You just need to talk to the doctor in charge or to the physician for more details on that. Alongside people who were getting the vaccine, we earlier uh, at many centers, they were doing rat tests, a rap, a rapid antigen test rampantly. So now no screening of the vaccine recipients is required. That is uh, obviously we already know that the rat test, uh, the authenticity, the effectivity, the sensitivity, specificity of the rat test is kind of low. But uh, irrespective of that fact, we were doing rat tests and now there is no screening for vaccine recipients. And finally, for blood donation. If you want to donate blood, very important that there's a catch in this. If you want to donate blood, you have to wait for 14 days. 14 days of what? If you've got COVID, 
if you have got COVID, the guidelines say that if you have got COVID, you have to wait for 14 days after you get a RT-PCR negative result. It does not say that once you are once you are uh, uh, recovered from COVID infection, you wait for two weeks. No, it says that once you get a standard documentation of the RT-PCR negative, you need to wait for 14 days to donate blood. That means in case all the patients who've already, all the people who have already got COVID and now they want to donate blood, you need to have a RT-PCR negative result. In simple words, it means this. Alongside, you can also donate blood in case you have taken a vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine. Then again, after taking the vaccine, you need to wait for 14 days and then you can donate blood. So actually, blood donation was a major issue. So earlier, the government of India had taken a stand that maybe 10 to 14 days should be the time and then they increase it to three months that the blood donation should be delayed, but that actually hampers your blood donation department in most of the hospitals. So technically speaking, blood donation after 14 days can happen after a, a documented RT-PCR negative report. So that was some of the recommendations from the vaccine front. So now we come over to the management of COVID-19 patients new protocol launched on 17th of May by the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. AIMS people have been have been very 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 uh, generous in making guidelines and they put guidelines put forward the guideline uh, as and when they generate more evidence from research. So in the previous guideline, which was before the 17th of May, somewhere in the first week of May, the guideline uh, had a different pre treatment protocol. And now on 17th of May, we have a slightly different protocol. Let us see what it is. So for COVID-19 patients, we can either classify them into mild disease, moderate disease and severe disease. It is based on whether you have hypoxia or no hypoxia. So in case there is hypoxia, there is a decrease in the SpO2 or there is increase in the respiratory rate. So if the respiratory rate ranges from 24 to 29, it is a moderate. If it is more than 30 respiratory rate, it is a severe disease. If the SpO2 is less than 90% on room air, less than 90% on room air, it is categorized as a severe disease. And if the SpO2 is 90 to 93% on room air, it is categorized as moderate. Beyond this, all the patients who have upper respiratory illnesses but without hypoxia and without shortness of breath, they are classified as mild disease. So this, the, the categorization of COVID-19 is still the same. What is the treatment plan for COVID-19 mild cases? For mild cases, the treatment is also almost the same that they need hydration, they need antipyretics, anti-fever drugs, they need antitussives and they need multivitamins. So the COVID appropriate behavior that already is there and that uh, remains the same. But now the treatment change which occurs is, which has been proposed and given by the All India Institute of Medical Sciences, they support the use of tablet ivermectin in mild cases of COVID-19. They also support, again, there is a re-entry of this wonder drug that is the tablet hydroxychloroquine. So tablet hydroxychloroquine was uh, somewhere uh, talk of the town in 2020, in early parts of 2020, when there were so many cases of COVID-19 across the globe. So tablet hydroxychloroquine was talk on the town at that time, then it somewhere faded off from the market and now it's back again uh, given as a treatment proposal by the All India Institute of Medical Sciences that use of tablet hydroxychloroquine 400 mg BD for one day followed by 400 mg OD for a couple of days can be given to all mild cases unless it is contraindicated. Apart from that, inhalational budesonide because it's an upper respiratory infection, so it can be given. But the point is that systemic steroids, systemic steroids are no more indicated for mild cases. Systemic steroids are not indicated. The, they, there might be two school of thought. So there might be two different groups of doctors on the, standing on the, on the use of systemic steroids for, uh, for mild cases because systemic steroids have an optimum time of entry in the treatment plan. So in case you miss that optimum time, then the patient obviously may take a, a bad course towards the COVID. So anyways, the AIMS Institute have not supported use of systemic steroids and 
has not indicated as a part of treatment protocol for the mild COVID-19 infections, probably because of a more increase in case of mucormycosis and steroid-related or iatrogenic infection could be there. Apart from that, there is new update in the treatment protocol that the use of convalescent plasma has been taken off. It is no more indicated, it is no more proposed to be used in cases of moderate to severe uh, cases of COVID-19. So convalescent plasma is no more indicated. The reason for convalescent plasma could also be the same that because in convalescent plasma we are giving antibodies on someone else. So already those severe cases or the moderate cases they might uh, in what happens in severe and moderate cases we have a we have a cytokine storm we have a immune reaction within our cell the our immune system is fighting with our own self. In those cases use of antibodies may actually uh, instead of helping the patient may actually take a worse clinical outcome has been shown by some of the researchers but of course quotes quotes some organization are still supporting convalescent plasma whereas Ames Institute has dropped the use of convalescent plasma for use in moderate to severe uh, COVID-19 infection that is not a part of the management protocol. Coming to the use of monoclonal antibodies that is bam map and ETE Sevimimab. So these two monoclonal antibodies, they are all always used in conjunction. They are never given alone. We also have another conjunction antibody that is Sezirivimab and Imdevimab. So these two types of monoclonal antibody cocktails have been given emergency use authorization by different countries. The point to be noted is that bamlanivimab and etesivimab, the B and E cocktail, this drug may, this antibody cocktail may show resistance towards some of the COVID strains. Whereas sazirivimab, it has been given the emergency use authorization by the Drug Controller General of India and the sazirivimab and imdevimab combination or the cocktail may be given in market may be pushed off in the Indian market by Roche company Roche pharmaceutical and in association with the CIPLA they are trying to do strategic marketing and and pushing this uh, monoclonal antibody into the Indian market please note that the COVID-19 patients who have mild to moderate disease and they are not on oxygen therapy and they are not oxygen and uh, they are not hospitalized only those cases should be given monoclonal antibodies it has been shown by the fda it has been shown by all the places that sazirivimab and imdevimab these are not authorized these are not authorized for use in patients who are hospitalized due to COVID-19 who require oxygen therapy due to COVID-19 or in some patients who already were on oxygen therapy due to any other disease apart from COVID-19. Now because of COVID-19 if they require increase in the baseline oxygen flow rate in those cases sazirivimab, imdevimab is not authorized for use. So they have been authorized only in certain cases where we have already discussed. So for the variants, as far as variants are concerned, the bamlanivimab and the etesivimab uh, cocktail combination, monoclonal combination, it has shown resistance against the double mutant and the triple mutant strains in India. So all the countries which are given e emergency use authorization to these monoclonal antibodies, they should be, uh, they should be kind of more aware about what strain is circulating or percolating in their population and based on that the antibodies can be used. So with that thank you so much for watching this module. You can join any of our groups on Telegram, Facebook, Instagram and any questions please feel free to ask in the comment box below. Thank you so much. Take care and be safe.